Look at the ocean of their companions, struggles and sacrifices. This deen that you and I have the luxury of now today, this didn't come for free. Someone paid the price for it somewhere along the road. This is deen. Allah says in the Quran, remember the Prophet said, you will never taste the sweetness of Iman. Why are we struggling with our deen and with our faith? Because of our levels of sacrifices. They've become really, like it's, it's, it's become a joke. We do so little for deen. And yet we speak about it like Allahu Akbar, move out of the way bro. We give Allah, forgive me my brothers, every time I say this expression, people tend to get offended. I don't understand. We give Allah, in reality, let's be realistic. We give Allah trash. I give Allah rubbish. Rubbish. And in return, I want from Allah, not just Jannah. What do I want? Say it with me, bro. Yeah, I want for those al-A'la. We give Allah trash. We give Allah, sorry, sorry. We give Allah scraps. Scraps. And I can see some of you are a bit edgy. Relax. Wallah, I'm going to explain it's mum to you. <laughs> we give Allah scraps. And in return, in return, what do I want from Allah? <coughs> Allah says, لَمْ تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِكُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ Allah says, you will never, remember, etch this in stone, you will never attain the level of birr. It's a level of iman. It's a level of faith. You will never, Allah says, you will never attain this level of birr hatta up and until you give up that which you love the most. Allah wants to be more beloved to you than anything else in your life. But how does Allah see this? He tests you. He puts you in a situation where you now need to make choices. You now need to sacrifice. Suhaib so, Rumi, ever heard the name? Suhaib al-Rumi radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Suhaib al-Rumi was originally from Rome. He came to Mecca before the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam became a prophet. When he came to Mecca, please live this story with me as best as you can. Live it with me and don't just think about him, but think about your own life. Think about your own relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This deen was built and established on sacrifice. And if there is no sacrifice, then there is no deen at all. <coughs> so Hayb rumi came as a slave. And he worked his way up until he eventually freed himself. And he, he worked until he bought himself out, became a free man. So Hayb rumi became Muslim in secret. Because in Mecca, things were very tough. So he became Muslim in secret. So when the order came from Allah, that now migration has been made compulsory, that the Muslims had to flee, had to leave the Mecca and go to Medina, the Muslims are leaving now. Those that were openly Muslim had no choice. But now Suhaib al-Rumi, who his Islam was secret, now he had a dilemma. Now I'm from Mecca, and I'm from one of the wealthy ones, and now Rasulullah and the companions have left. And I'm one of the, and he was, maybe at the time, he was the only one that's left in Mecca. Now what to do? What to do? Choices and sacrifices. You know what the most unfortunate thing is? Is when we, when we read or we hear about the stories of those that did migration, we think migration ended there. Uqsim Billah, I swear by Allah, any person that wants to reach Allah and His Prophet, be it the 21st century or the 30th century, Habibi. The tartib and the sunnah of Allah never changes. If you want Allah, you have to sacrifice and there will come a point in time 
guess what? You have to migrate. You may not have to migrate from one country to another, but you may have to leave one town for another. Sacrifices. So now Suhaib al-Rumi, bro, what am I going to do? He, 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 he gathered all of his wealth, buried his wealth by himself, prepared himself at night, mounted on his horse, and in secret, he's fleeing and he's going to Medina. What an amazing story. As he's leaving, he's on the outskirts of Mecca, he's ambushed by a battalion, maybe about 25 Meccans, non-believers, and they surround him. <coughs> these, are, these, are, these are the stories of your fathers. These are the people that you will meet, inshallah. You will meet these people on the day of resurrection. You know their stories. Wallahi, I just panic and I fear. What stories do we have for them, man? So now Suhaib al-Rumi, he's ambushed. It's dark, he's alone, and he's fleeing to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And now he's surrounded by a battalion of the people of Mecca. And they surrounded him. And now listen. Now listen, listen, listen to the conversation. They said to him, Oh Suhaib, where are you going? What you think they you think that they didn't know? They knew exactly what was happening. So they said to him, Oh Suhaib, where are you going? Halas now Suhaib realizes, look, I'm caught red-handed. What do I do? So Suhaib says, I'm going to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Halas, the cat's out of the bag now. So now they say to him, what? They said, oh Suhaib, do you think we're going to let you leave Mecca and go to Muhammad just like that? Didn't you, now they're, now they're reminding him like many people remind you. Suhaib, didn't you come to us a slave? He said, yes. Didn't we allow you, O Suhaib, to live amongst us and work until eventually you freed yourself? He said, yes. Suhaib, didn't we allow you to trade in our market and buy and sell until you became one of the wealthiest amongst us, Suhaib? He said, yeah, you did. They said, Suhaib, do you think we're going to let you go and take our money with you? So Suhaib says to them, what? Look at their fathers. Suhaib says to them, he says, look, I'll give you guys an ultimatum. Imagine <coughs> one man is speaking to a battalion, telling them, look, I'm going to give you an ultimatum. He said, one is, I tell you where I've buried all of my wealth. How much? How much? Oh, yeah. Today you give $1,000 at, at a fundraising dinner. Yeah. You don't know who you want to mention the story to. You don't know who you want to mention the story to. And you never forget it either. Habibi, I still hear, brother, my father put money in that place. Wow. <coughs> we pass on our stories from father to son. So Suhaib says to them, look, I'll tell you where all my money is buried. Take it and let me go. They said to him, and what's the other option? He said, the other option is this. He says, I have a bag of arrows on my back. And Suhaib was a very good archer. He said, I swear by Allah, I will shoot arrow after arrow and you will fall <coughs> one after one. Until there's no arrows left. Then I will withdraw my sword and I will swing it till either I kill you all or you kill me. <laughs> so if you want to dance, let's dance, Habibi. I got my dancing shoes on. Take all my wealth. Well, let's do this. So they said, no, Suhaib. Go, Habibi, tell us where the money is. He tells them, this happened alone. 
and then he migrates to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he gets to Medina, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam runs out to greet him and says to him, Rabi al Aba Yahya, Rabi al Aba Yahya. What a successful transaction, Abu Yahya, that was his kunya. What a successful transaction you made with Allah. Suhaib al is thinking, what transaction? <coughs> this happened in Mecca, I was alone. How did you know about it? Who revealed it to me? Allah was so pleased that Allah Jalla Jalalu reveals this to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to teach this Ummah that this deen doesn't come for free. Sacrifices need to be made to test the sweetness of Iman. You will never reach Allah sitting on a couch Wrapping one leg over another with a argili shisha in your hand, watching a YouTube video. Habib, this is not deen, this is a mockery of deen.